hello and welcome to my latest video. In this video I'm going to be painting this Alchemite Warforger from the Cities of Sigma box set that uh, Games Workshop sent me. Uh, you can see the model is already completely stuck together, primed black. I've left off the uh, the cube with the smoke coming from it that goes inside his pot uh, just so that I can you know, paint the uh, details in there a little bit more easily but everything else is all glued together. Uh, to start with, we're going to be painting the helmet. The helmet comes in like two separate sort of materials, or at least it looks like it to me anyway. Uh, so the top looks like it's uh, kind of goldy coloured from a Stormcast Eternal, and then the the mouth plate cover thing looks very battered, and it's like a like a steel plate or whatever hammered over the front of it. So I've decided to paint them like I just described. It's like a, a gold helmet with a steel plate on it. Uh, I'm going to be painting them in non-metallic metal. Uh, just because that's how, what I prefer to paint, uh, you know, don't feel restricted or whatever, or you know, it's not any uh, condemnation on you if you want to use true metallics. But you know, for for this video, it's all going to be non-metallics. Uh, to start with, I'm using uh, XV88 uh, just to block in the highlights. So the the look of this, it's not actually going to be gold. It's going to be more like a bronzy kind of color. Uh, but the, the colours between gold and bronze are, are very similar, it's just looking a little bit darker. And the, the main thing that you're going to be doing to start with is just blocking in the highlights. So you take the XV88, uh, I'm using a size 2 Artis Opus brush, and you're just kind of like looking where the light falls on the model. So one thing you can do is hold it under a lamp uh, just to see how the light falls on it naturally, blocking all those pieces. Uh, because of the way that I'm painting this in like quite a quick, loose fashion, you don't have to get a completely opaque like solid finish to any of the brush marks you can sort of like be a bit loose and scribbly with how you apply it just to you know just make sure that you get some paint on there and roughly in the right sort of position you can tidy it up later on and because the paint is, is around about one and a half parts water to one part paint so the paint's reasonably thin and what that means is that you know you can add a few layers to it and not worry about you know that the paint build up and then later on if you want and indeed in this video I'll on certain parts of the model I'll take the refining a little bit further so the head will be sort of like to a higher standard than other parts of the model and but, but if you wanted you could take the whole model to a, a very high standard if you want it like the golden demon or whatever it, um, whereas if you'd use thicker paint it becomes a lot harder to do that because you get like a texture build up here you can see I'm using neutral grey so this is a Vallejo colour uh, you don't have to use neutral grey, you can use, I think it's Mechanicum standard grey, uh, very very similar, it's either Mechanicum or Mechanicus uh, from Games Workshop, but, or you can just make your own grey, it, it really doesn't matter uh, that much, but you know, a, a grey colour. And this is going to be used as a base for most of the, the steel type coloured objects. If uh, you want, uh, you can also add a little bit of colour to this, so I sometimes use Demonette Hide as a, a base grey colour. Uh, so it's sort of like a purpley kind of grey, very very it's still grey, it's not like a obviously purple but it just has like a bit of a bit more interest in there and I do actually uh, later on switch over and start using some Demonet Hide and some Slanesh Grey uh, just to you know add a, a touch more colour to the uh, the metallics or the, the, the non-metallics rather of uh, any of the metal pieces on the model. You can see as well as I've applied the paint very very loosely you know just using sort of like the tip of the brush, using the larger brush, uh, just sort of block in all of these metal colours. And the nice thing is you can be very scribbly as you apply the paint because that will then turn into texture as you refine it more. You can turn those into scratches and dents and all sorts of nice shapes uh, rather than just having a very flat, boring look to it. Uh, for the, the leather apron and indeed uh, all the leather parts and the skin on the model, we're just going to base it with Rhinox Hide. Again, it doesn't have to be a perfect finish. You don't have to go over it multiple times. Just slap the paint on. Again, around about one and a half parts water to one part paint. Uh, although test it. Like sometimes you know different paint pots they can be a little bit uh, more wet, and other ones can be a bit thicker. So you know, if you find the paint isn't flowing add more water to it. Don't just automatically go by whatever paint mixture I say, uh, because depending on, you know, you could be in a really hot environment or whatever, the paint could have dried out a bit more. It could be an old pot of paint you've got. So, you know, just try and get it so it's loose and runny and you can very uh, you know, easily apply it to the model. And as I said, it doesn't have to be a perfect finish, doesn't have to be like completely opaque all over just get some brown on there on the leather and the skin sections. You can also see that I've also taken the XV88 and filled in 
parts of the staff and on the metal uh, clasp section you know that attaches to his belt or just over his chest there uh, it, also if you look on the the staff i know it's a bit messy but it, it is brighter more towards the hand section and then and it gets darker down to the bottom and it's kind of like similar on his hammer there as well uh, for the first layer of color on the skin i've, I've gone for Mornfang brown as we go progress through the different stages of highlights on the model it will become more and more refined and it will be entirely up to you on what level of refinement you want to, to take it to uh, but you know if you want something that's going to be like a, a commander or whatever in your army or you want something for golden demon or whatever then the refinement just becomes progressively uh, more complicated and takes takes longer uh, and longer for for each level of refinement that you add to it but you can get something still that looks really cool quite quickly like this wasn't the longest uh, model to paint for me and you know it's actually quite exciting to paint something like this as well because it has like lots of different surface textures and things so with the leather the skin the metal you know all those different parts it just makes it a, a bit more fun to paint something like that uh, the second layer here of highlight for the leather so the leathers are going to be different colors in the end but for the first stage just go for Bugman's Glow uh, it, it's kind of interesting that you can start off with the Rhinox Hide and then the Bugman's Glow and you just sort of like slap the paint on uh, in a sort of a scribbly way again. Uh, it is applied slightly differently on the straps compared to the apron so if you look on the straps it's more like horizontal lines like they're very rough and wiggly but you get like these layers of horizontal lines built up to kind of like match the texture on the straps and whereas on the apron it was more sort of like squiggly rough scratchy kind of marks and you can see, you know, just apply those all over. But uh, as I was going to say, like all the, the leathers will be separated out a, a little bit later on. Uh, if you see now, and remember when I talked earlier for adding the uh, the greys, I mentioned you can use Demonet Hide and you can use Slanesh Grey. So now I'm using Slanesh Grey as a highlight over the neutral grey. But if you wanted, you could have used Demonet Hide as the base color for it as well. It's not going to make a huge difference and if you don't have Demonet Hide and Slash Grey you can just add white to Neutral Grey as well. It'll get a very similar finish, just a little bit less color. Um, and indeed if you wanted you can have uh, other colors mixed in with your uh, sort of like grey base color as well. You can you know add some reds or greens or whatever um, because don't forget so like the, the metal is sort of like a steel equivalent and that will reflect colors from the environment so if you're like in like a grassy field or whatever there could be greens reflecting in there um you know so don't feel constrained by the, the actual colors that i'm using uh, if you look now you can see that i've swapped over to a size zero zero brush um, you don't have to do that if you're perfectly happy using a size two size three whatever as long as it's got a sharp tip on it uh, that's fine you can stick with that i find just using the smaller brush uh, allows me to have greater access on the model especially when it's all stuck together like this so just painting around the you know behind the pot or, or whatever i don't have to worry so much about catching other parts of the model uh, but also i can just see a bit more clearly because there's not a like a big fat brush in the way it's quite thin all the way down and also i can push a little bit harder with it and it's still going to make quite a small mark whereas if you have a large brush you push quite hard you're going to make a big mark so i mean there are differences in the marks and things that you make but it, it's not like a super important difference between the two uh, but you can see you know I've um, I've been using that uh, slanesh grey and I've just been doing like the same sort of marks as I was doing before but they're smaller more refined like bunched more closely together and I've been looking again at where the light falls on the model so if you see on the faceplate you know the, the steel faceplate as it goes further forward and it curves out at the bottom the light naturally falls there and catches on that so that's where I've been focusing on adding those highlights and you know refining those marks a bit on the gold helmet here or bronze helmet whatever you want to say <laughs> it's uh, uh, so we're up to the, the next stage highlight now and this is Baylor Brown and we're doing exactly the same thing again and it's the same refining process as well in that the marks are smaller closer together more bunched but we're still looking for where the light falls on the model now you do have to take your own initiative a little bit here because what happens is because it's a small model when you hold it under a lamp the light hitting it leaves very big marks uh, but some of these you want to make them a bit smaller and you know just clearer uh, so that it 
the the scale looks more correct because otherwise you can end up with something that looks like a very nicely painted and highlighted toy um whereas you know as things scale differently with the lights hitting them uh, the you know things change in size uh, but generally speaking you can still use the lamp as a guide to see where the light's falling on it but you know just keep in mind that uh, you might want to make some of the highlights a little bit smaller uh, but all you're doing is you're still going over the the base highlights that you've painted on there but the uh, while leaving some of the the lower base colors on uh, to at the edges and then sort of making the highlight itself a little bit more opaque uh, and if you get a transit you can get a bit of a transition going as well so if it's more opaque in towards the center of the highlight and a bit more translucent translucent just means that the light can pass through it which means that you can see the paint layer underneath uh, it'll then look more like a transition going from the edge to the, the middle even though you're only using one color of paint there you could see I use some Montfranc brown into the recess sort of shadowy kind of areas uh, and that makes a big ch uh, change to the color of the uh, the gold well the bronzy goldy uh, sort of area um Montfranc brown is a really nice color for this as well because uh, it's quite translucent it, it blends really easy it's a darker color anyway um so it will you know it's just very easy to use a slight slightly thinner layer and have some of the the paint show through while making a very even coverage uh, but uh, you can also sort of like blend things using very very tiny marks uh, and again i'm still using the size zero zero brush using just the the tip of the brush uh, when you take the paint from the palette by the way make sure you rub off the excess don't just put the paint the paintbrush into the the paint and then go straight to the model it will blob it if you look at the tip of the, the brush before you know after you just put it in the paint and you lift it off it'll be like a round blob on the tip and you'll flood the model uh, when you first touch it so put the brush onto the paint then rub it on your thumb uh, and take off the excess and so you get a nice sharp point when you then apply it to the model when you're doing this you do have to work reasonably quickly though because as you take the excess paint off and just naturally while well, you know the paint's on the brush it starts to dry but because you take that excess paint off and a bit of friction or whatever the paint is drying so don't you know don't take a long time <laughs> to get the paint from the the paint palette onto the model uh, while taking off the excess uh, now, as I mentioned, you can spend as long or as short time as you want, but I do find that when painting things like uh, heads and chest areas on model, it's worth putting in a little bit of extra time because those are going to be the focal points. Those will be the bits that people look at the most. You know, people don't care about the feet. You know, the the extremities, the further away parts, quite as much. They'll look at the the sort of like center of the model, and that's where they'll judge if it the model looks good or not. And you know, the rest of it is kind of, you know it's more worth doing if you're doing it for a competition but you know really for just like a, a bit of fun painting or whatever uh, but like if you really enjoy painting of course spend as, as long as you want on a model but you know um to get the the most bang for your buck focus on the head and chest of of the model that if that's where you've got time that you want to spend on it that's where you should uh, you should really focus so now we're on to another stage highlight for the head and this is Baylor brown mixed with ice yellow you can see by this stage it's again it's just the same thing over and over for each additional layer but just getting more refined smaller marks more control the only difference here is you can see on the helmet there's two like sort of round blob highlights now you don't get any guide for painting those on you can't hold those under a lamp uh, because they just won't appear <laughs> the, these are to simulate the metal effect of reflections from random things in the environment and you can put these anywhere you want on the model the trick is just to making it look good when you apply them but generally speaking i would put and also the shape of them they don't have to be round they they will be to a certain extent uh, altered by the shape of the surface that you're place, placing them on so they'll be distorted like if there's like an s shape they will obviously naturally follow the s shape of the you know the curves and things like that uh, but generally speaking when you're putting these additional highlights on put them in a darker area so they can be visible you know there's no point in trying to paint l extra lights on a light area because it's just not going to show up or whatever but you know try and balance it out if there's a large blank like dark area you can just stick an extra reflection in there uh, and as long as it's not too obnoxious and too bright um, for, for any of the additional highlights that you place try not to make them brighter than the primary highlight because then you're if you do make them as bright or even brighter 
compared to the primary highlight they actually then fight each other uh, in terms of focus and it makes both of them less interesting whereas if you have one primary highlight that's the one that grabs your attention and the other ones sort of like add detail in the background uh, and again it's, it's very similar on the like the steel face plate that goes over the, the, over his mouth but for this because of the sculpting looking at it it's very sort of like chipped and like hammered into place uh, I, I used the more scratchy look. So if you look on the, the gold look on the, the helmet itself, that's a lot smoother looking in how I've painted it. Uh, but the, the, the metal mask is sort of more textured, more scribbly, and each additional layer of refinement is has kept those sort of scribbly marks. Whereas on the, the helmet, especially on the forehead kind of section, the, uh, the transitions and the layers are much smoother. So it's kind of interesting as well just to you know take that into account when you're painting the different surfaces you can achieve different effects with the different brush marks that you use you don't have to paint everything smooth uh, and clean you can you know add textures to create like the different surfaces uh, if you look at the the staff there so I mentioned it earlier on but I use the same colors on the the staff handle as on the face uh, on the helmet um, but they the highlights all come to just around the hand placement and it just stays very dark now I'm going to be refining those a little bit more uh, off camera you can see you know I've started to do a little bit here and there already um, but you know having it light up near the, the top towards the top of the staff and then keeping it dull at the bottom again helps with the focus and also it's nice because you don't have to spend as long painting the darker sections just it, they still look like a little, little bit scruffy and you picked out some edge highlights and things but um, it kind of like it enhances, enhances the shine by having like that one shiny part whereas if you paint the shine going all the way down it sort of looks less shiny and less interesting uh, I, and again doing the same sort of thing on this uh, this clasp section on the, the front of his chest so this is it's using the same colors at this stage uh, but the way I'm applying them is a little bit more scratchy to sort of like separate it out from the helmet but also uh, I do end up putting some verdigris on these. Now I don't show that in the video, which was my mistake. I didn't record it, but it was some. I was talking to a friend and uh, he thought it would be cool to add some verdigris, and so I ended up doing that kind of like later on in the process. Uh, I wish I'd recorded it, but it's it's very simple to do. And all I all I did was use some cyberite green, water that down, uh, around about two parts water to one part paint, something like that. So it's quite fluid and then just paint it around the recesses of the uh, the rivet parts on it and then add a little bit of white to it so it gets lighter and do the same thing again but try and keeping the line even thinner you'll see in the photo how it looks at the end anyway but um it just helps with uh, separating out the material for of the clasp from the helmet and from the uh, the staff handle the sort of like all the the button type parts on the leathers as well these are, are quite simple to do um you could i started to paint them with a shiny point on and then i thought um it looks a bit strange doing that that's kind of like more how you would do a gem whereas the buttons are quite flat so all i've really done there is for a start they were painted with the neutral gray and then i used the slanesh gray with some edges edge highlighting sort of bits on and then I've just gone over with some P3 Mora White just to sort of highlight them a little bit more at the top, but nothing too sort of fancy. So they're very flat, and that separates them out from the, the more dome-like shape uh, rivet things on the uh, the clasp, you know, the, the gold or bronze uh, clasps on, his, uh, on the front of him. Uh, so working a little bit more on the leather strap here. Now, these leather straps are, as I mentioned they're going to be a different color from the leather apron and if you look on the the wet palette there I'm uh, sort of I've, I've mixed in a, a bit of a color so this is a uh, Cadian flesh tone and mixed in with a little bit of Baylor brown as well so it looks a bit more orangey you don't I mean, you, you can just get away with just using Cadian flesh tone if you want it's not going to make a huge difference none of the you know the, the subtle colors I'm going to add to this will make a massive difference because what I end up doing when I've highlighted it all is I give it a glaze of Mornfang brown and that will just add those sort of ready brownie colors in there anyway uh, 
but it doesn't it doesn't hurt to add a, a little bit of extra color uh, the main thing to get right is actually the the textures on these so um, try and follow the shape of the, the sculpted on textures that is a huge benefit to uh, you know keeping consistent with the marks if you're doing something that doesn't follow the the marks are already sculpted on there it can sort of like clash with them and make it look a bit weird but if you just sort of like naturally keep the paintbrush marks flowing with the shape of the sculpt that's already there they just naturally harmonize together and it sort of all works very nicely here you can see as i was mentioning before I'm glazing on the mournfang brown on top of the highlights so that's uh, made a very definite difference in color between the apron and these straps now uh, if you find, and um, for the glazing it down, you want around about four parts water to one part paint and use a larger brush and just, it's a very thin layer of very heavily diluted paint that goes over the top of them. If you find that it knocks it back too much, you can always you know, go back up and pick up a few more details again with the highlight color that you used. Uh, for the pot here, so I didn't show this uh, for how to airbrush it because it's a bit of a pain for me having to set up, you know, to record uh, airbrushing. But just to tell you how I did it, all I did was sprayed some uh, um, Mephiston Red right into the center of the pot so it goes nice and red. Then I cleaned that out uh, and used some Uriel Yellow and sprayed that even more in the center and less at the edges. So it's got like a start yellow in the middle and it goes sort of like orangey as it goes up. The main thing to get the, the nice effect is to just use some black. So I'm using some uh, Vallejo Model Color Black. And all you're doing is go around and you pick out every single one of the little dirty lumps of I don't know, coagulate <laughs> like the, the the dry lumps of stuff around the edges and paint the top section of each one of those black. So, but make them larger black marks right where it touches the edge of the pot. And then as it gets closer to the, the yellow sort of core fire part, um, just make the dots a little bit smaller. And it's, you know, it's quite a nice effect. The only thing I would say about if you spend too much time on that is that when you put the smoke with the cube in it, it's, it does block a lot of this. Uh, and it's a bit annoying yeah, if you spent a long time on there uh, just to see all your work hidden away. The, uh, the non-metallic effect on the pot is very, very similar to the mask. Same colors again, going through the, the stage highlights, uh, you know, neutral gray, uh, slanesh gray, uh, and then white. You can add additional stages of gray if you like, because what might happen is once you've painted the neutral gray on, and then you go to the slanesh gray, or indeed if you've added white to like neutral gray to make a lighter gray or whatever, uh, what happens is you can apply that and it might be a, a bit too much of a like a tonal jump between the two and it'll look very stark. Now you can mitigate that by making the marks very scratchy. Um, so it's sort of like, yeah, you, you just be like loose scratchy marks and it'll look like it sort of blends with the marks that you're making. But if you find that you still have trouble getting like a, a nice transition there you can add additional gray so just like take the neutral gray and add a small amount of the slanesh gray or white or whatever and then add a bit more and a bit more so you can have like four or five different mixes of gray uh, and that will make the transitions a little bit easier uh, to blend together just because they're closer uh, in brightness uh, so now uh, going on to the skin uh, remember the skin was rhinox hide to start with then a mournfang brown with the additional layers uh, but still leaving some of the Rhinox hide visible, um, mainly like in the, the sort of shadow areas and using the, the Mournfang brown. Uh, sort of like using the thing where you hold the model under the lamp and you see where the light falls naturally. You know, it's a, it's a big help, big guide to do that. Uh, and a, a lot of people do that. You can either do it naturally as you're painting or you can take, like have a nice setup where you take a photo of the model. Uh, so it's exactly in the setting that you want with a light setting and then you can use that as a reference to copy it. Uh, the next stage highlight here uh, is uh, I can never remember, right. So it's Kadin flesh tone mixed with some uh, Baylor brown and a bit of white, and that's around about as light as you want to go for the highlights on this. You can take it a little bit higher. You can add a bit more white to it, so you can have some additional uh, highlight stages to it. But if at any stage you feel like you've gone uh, too light. In, in the highlight you can um, I mean you can see I'm using some uh, XV88 as a highlight as well to sort of blend in the colors 
actually I, I did make a mistake there the, there's the, the, the stage highlight after the uh, the Montag Brown is XV88 and then it's after that that it's uh, the Cadian flesh tone mixed with Baylor Brown and a little bit of white um, but you know this wants to be quite smooth you want to make sure the surface texture on this looks different from the metal uh, but more so from the leather because the leather is very heavily textured uh, and sort of like cracked and the skin is much smoother again rely on how the model is sculpted it'll give you a like a huge guide on how the sculptor intended for it to look like you can still paint on additional textures and things if you want uh, but you know if it's the surface is already sculpted in a textured way it's very hard to then uh, change the look of that texture whereas if it's smooth you know you you can definitely paint it smooth or you can paint whatever textures you want on there but uh, they're never going to be as harsh looking as something that's sculpted in a three-dimensional textured way um, when you're painting the highlights on the muscles if you find that you've gone too bright like so don't worry about if you, you go too far so you go through so Rhinox Hyde, Mournfang Brown, XV88, mix of <laughs> of whatever you want, like <laughs> clean flesh tone, veil of brown, and white. Uh, but that mix, that highlight, that's it's going to be light. If you go too bright with, with that, like you put too much down, it looks too light. Go back with the XV88. Go back with the Mournfang Brown. You can turn those into glazes as well. Thin the paint down. Just soften over the edges. But just don't take those highlights don't put like a big block of white highlight on there like the deltoids and the biceps and things like that because it'll be too strong just keep it like subtle and shiny so that you can still see the brown there um, because otherwise you're going to turn it into like a, a non-metallic metal surface otherwise uh, so now i'm going in with the uh this is cadian flesh tone again so if you look at the top of the wet palette there top left that's plain cadian flesh tone and i'm using that uh, to highlight the apron. So remember the apron is just Rhinox Hide, uh, Bugman's Glow and now Cadian Flesh Tone. Whereas you can see when I was painting on the, the brown skin it was the top highlight was Cadian Flesh Tone with a small amount of Baylor Brown and white added and you can see how it's, it's just a very small amount. You can just see how it's just a little bit more lighter and more yellowy looking than the Cadian Flesh Tone next to it. So remember looking at top left that's Cadian Flesh Tone. Right next to that on the wet palette that's the the skin highlight now it's it's not like a huge difference between the two and if you wanted you could use some of the skin highlight on the apron as well but the idea is to try and separate them out a little bit more using the colors as well uh, so that's why you know there's that like m kind of like quite marginal difference uh, now on the, the the pot here i was in two minds on how to paint the pot i first started out so i was going to paint this as a really strong osl on there and when I did it, it was so overdone, and it drew focus away from the you know the important parts of the model, and um, like it was just a little bit gaudy and over the top. Uh, and by the way, don't worry about the horrible black blob that he's standing on. That was just because I had some spare modeling putty and uh, turned that into a big rock, and I painted it before it dried. But um, it, by the the end of the video, it's, it's fine. I painted up and cover it with uh, grass tufts. Um, but the uh, the rune sort of effect here I decided just to keep it very subtle and all it is is uh, Mephiston Red blocking the uh, so you can see there one that hasn't been highlighted yet uh, while I'm still you know going through all the stages uh, that's just Mephiston Red fill in the area then go up to Wild Rider Red and a bit of orange uh, so Trollsayer Orange and just you know use less and less each time uh, so it sort of like has a kind of a subtle glow effect in the middle um, but you know not nothing uh, too extravagant with that I took away all of the uh, the red glow from around it you, you could see there was some uh, Mephiston Red that was watered down and I was doing like oh so warm glow around the pot or whatever but um, it just it's not really worth it <laughs> if you want you can make them like really strong osl but uh for me i just found it was a bit too over the top uh then here on the uh, the leather apron i took some neutral gray watered it down and just put some on the bottom of it just to give it make it look like a bit a bit worn and dirty i probably would have gone in with a bit of rhinox hide over the top of this as well uh, i wanted to get this done quite uh, quickly by this stage so um it's still a bit rough but so here you can see I've spent a little bit more time you can see what I was talking about with the verdigris on the metal clasp 
and also I've now glued in the uh, the smoke uh, and there's a, a cube at the, the bottom there that you can't quite see in the pot uh, but it's you know, just a bit annoying it sort of like blocks a lot of the, the work that was painted inside the pot as well um, but yeah so you know quite a quick video uh, there is a longer video of this on my website and on my patreon so that's about an hour and a half long uh, where I just talk a lot more <laughs> um, and you see a bit a bit more painting and stuff like that but this should just give you like uh, all the details and things to uh, to paint the uh, the model as you see it uh, one other thing that you can do actually that I uh, did on this is I use some Mornfang brown on a lot of the steel areas so if you look on the pot in the recesses on his um, uh, pincer thing so he's whole bit holding the uh, the metal cube in um, if you look in the, the darker areas on that it's just Mornfang brown glazed into those so for a glaze again it's just take the Mornfang brown thin it down around about four parts water to one part paint use a largish brush so like a size two or three load that up take off the excess on some kitchen roll so that most of the paint is gone and the brush just feels damp and then just gently glaze in towards the darkest areas on the model and it'll sort of like build up this dirty kind of rusty look to it but anyway that's the uh, the end of this video um please subscribe i've got lots more videos to come i'm hoping to get some tyranids out uh, soon as well with the, the new tyranid release uh, and also don't forget that i have my website and patreon where i have like a lot more videos where it's focusing mainly on sort of like displaying golden demon level entry things um as i said that's the end of the video i hope you enjoyed it thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time